Flight attempt, 2500 East Foothill. No further details. Tough assignment. Nobody can tell you exactly how to handle it. It takes a lot of fast and good thinking all on your own. But there are suggestions and procedures that can help. The first thing to think about is the suicide method. If it's a gun, you'll want backup help. A suicidal person can also be homicidal. If it's gas, it can mean an explosion. So the fire department needs to be alerted, and apartments or adjoining buildings evacuated. And you'll want to be careful to not turn on an electric switch or allow smoking. If it's pills or poison, cutting or hanging, it'll take fast action and first aid by you if an ambulance hasn't arrived. There's a man up there. He's been there for about 10 minutes. I think he's going to jump. If it's a jump, the area has to be cleared underneath. 2H31, attempt suicide, men on the roof, 2500 East Foothill, six-story office building. I'm out of the car. The dispatcher should take it from there. Lining up fire department helps with nets and ladders. Your job, to try to talk the person out of it, or at least delay the jump till other help gets there. Okay, man, don't come any closer. I'll jump. Okay. I'll jump. Okay, I won't come any closer. All I want to do is just talk to you. I want to find out how things are going and what the problem is. What do you care? I do care about you. Otherwise, I wouldn't come up here for you. I just want to talk to you and see if you can tell me what your problems are. What's your name? I'm Frank Jameson. I'm the youth services coordinator for the Pasadena Police Department. I'm a civilian social worker that's been hired uh, by the department to fill that capacity. Um, I think when we talk about tools that a police officer has at his disposal in terms of suicide prevention or crisis intervention, um, we really have to look at one primary source, and that's the officer it's himself. Uh, it's what he brings to a given situation that's going to depend a great deal on how that situation turns out. Like an officer's ability to remain calm, uh, professional, uh, exercise good judgment in, in crisis situations, that right in and of itself is going to transmit something uh, to the person who's contemplating taking his own life. I think that uh, calmness can be contagious, particularly when, when there isn't a lot of it around. I think I could closer to relate to you if I know what your name is. Would you mind telling me? I don't know why I should. I care about you. What is your name? My name is Marlon. Marlon, Marlon, I do care about you. That's exactly why I'm up here. I realize I'm just a cop, but that's all the reason I'm up here. Right now, I have nothing else in the world to do but stand here as long as it takes. But I'm more concerned about you and getting you down off of here. So will you come down now and talk with me? I'll wait right here and go down with you, no one else will do anything to you, no one's going to talk with you, I'll talk to you myself, and we'll talk about other people that can help you. I think the officer also provides a sounding board, something uh, off which this person can bounce their concerns, uh, their pain, their anguish, their problems. Marlon, could you talk to me a little bit? I think Why should talk I talk to you? You don't have to talk to me, but I think there's someone that we could talk to. What kind of problems you been having? Family problems? you have a family? No. I got a couple boys at home. One of them's giving me a little bit of trouble, but I, I try to solve some of the problems. Can I talk to you a little bit about your problem? I think if you could talk to me, I could better understand well, you a little bit. I've got too many of them to talk about. I haven't got the time. No, I think that's what we do have plenty of, Marlon. There's plenty of time. Uh, I, I think, however, if he's going to act in that role, it's very important that he not fall into the trap of becoming judgmental about the actions that the person is contemplating. I don't think an officer, for instance, would say, yeah, this is stupid, you don't want to jump. Or, uh, you know, you ought not to be considering this kind of behavior. You know, it's immoral or you're hurting those around you or whatever. I think when we talk about a suicidal person, we talk about someone who is suffering tremendously already and certainly doesn't need to have that compounded by someone making a, a value judgment or placing a value judgment on his behavior. Uh, on the other hand, the person does not, the officer does not want to become terribly patronizing, overly solicitous, because I think this is going to, A, come across as phony to the person who is contemplating taking his own life, and B, if, if carried to the extreme, may in fact uh, communicate to that person, gee, I really am in bad shape. You know, even this guy feels sorry for me. Uh, and if he feels sorry for me and, and he's here to help me, you know, I really must be in pretty bad shape, and there really isn't any hope. So I think the officer has to, um, enter into that fine mid-area between challenging the person to, to continue to live and become a functioning human being and a productive member of society 
not always happy necessarily, but at least a person who can deal with the problems that we all have to deal with from day to day. Fine line between that and becoming overly solicitous and, and overly sympathetic to the point where you really validate the person's feelings that he wants to take his own life. And I think there is some ground in there within which to work. Why don't you come on down and go down with me and let's talk about it. Let's talk with other people. Who have you talked with so far about your problems? I haven't talked with anybody. I don't feel like talking to nobody. Why don't you talk with me then? Do you have a minister? Yes. Okay. Could we contact him? I'd like to talk to him about your problems. You haven't talked to him yet. Maybe he's got some information or maybe some other people. I don't want to talk people. to the minister. I don't want to talk to nobody. I just want to get it all over with. Well, I think there's someone that we should be able to get to that could help you besides going this way. There are other resources within the community that ought to be mobilized as soon as a police department realizes that it has a potential suicide on its hands. Uh, for instance, there are suicide intervention centers in many cities. Uh, there are hotlines in many, many communities with people, usually paraprofessionals or volunteers, but people who've had some degree of training in crisis intervention. And uh, it would seem to me that a department ought to know what resources it has available, ought to arrange some kind of agreement by which it can muster those resources in a fairly rapid period of time. And once they know an officer is confronted with a person who's contemplating suicide, ought to begin to mobilize those resources and get them in touch with that person as quickly as possible. Uh, if you can relate on some personal level uh, and still remain somewhat objective to the problems the person is talking about, if you can tie into those and begin to talk about even very short-term suggestions how to mediate some of those problems, I think that would be the best tack for a police officer to take. Your knowledge of first aid and its fast application can play a big part in suicide prevention. But you can't win them all. Then it's important to make sure it was a suicide. The circumstances may call for a full-scale investigation later, so record, preserve, and isolate all evidence and do see if you can locate a suicide note right away. Someone may want to destroy it because of a feeling of family shame or personal guilt, or maybe for insurance reasons where the policy doesn't cover suicide. Why should I come down with you? Why shouldn't you come down with me? Have you answered it that way? No, can't answer that. Okay, I think I can help you. Or at least I know that I can get someone that can help you, whether I can or not. I'll stay right here for you. No one else is going to get to you. I'll stay with you and talk with you all the time. I want to stay with you until we get you the help you need, however long that takes. I have nothing else to do. You promise that? I promise that. You have my word, and I'll stay right here. Okay, I'm going to trust you. Thank you, Mark. Mostly keep this in your head when you respond to a suicide call. A lot of people are alive today, living useful, happy lives, because policemen interrupted their attempts to cut it short. Often a suicide attempt is just a kind of cry for help, to show them somebody really gives a damn. And that somebody can be you.